Thank you, Joan, and thank you for the invitation and for a very interesting uh, panel. Let me take up a brief historical point. I think from 1820 onwards, uh, we have what I'm going to call a Navarino complex in Greek history uh, that continues to the recent period. The Navarino complex, I'm going to say, is where great powers stumble almost by accidents into Greece's affairs and then set its fate. The Battle of Navarino uh, was a matter of a, uh, avoiding a peripheral state being a nuisance in a bigger international game, destabilizing larger strategic interests. In parallel, however, Greece domestically was then left to struggle to catch up with its more advanced allies. This catch-up process has been one of some angst for Greece, as it has sought a modernity defined elsewhere. This year has seen not only Greece's bicentenary, but also the 40th anniversary of Greece joining the then European community. But well before 1981, Europe was the key reference point in a self-torture between Greece's self-image and its domestic reality. We may look back to ancient and classical times and acknowledge that Greece gave to Europe much of its meaning. Of course it did. But today, Greece defines Europe's incompleteness in the form of the systemic limitations of the European Union. In the first two decades of Greece's EC membership, Europe was the focus for a light touch modernization process. The funding flowed into Greece with the integrated Mediterranean programs and the cohesion funds, etc. European money constituted most of Greece's infrastructure developments. Crudely, it was a matter of putting uh, new wine in all bottles. The Eurozone crisis, of course, saw Europe shift to hard constraints, uh, the conditionality with a troika and a severe austerity. For Greece today, the challenges remain. Can it live with a deepening integration process? Can it reform domestically without the European Union offering carrots and sticks? For when we look back 200 years, we can discern in the original conditions of the new Greek state, the antecedents of Greece's ongoing peripherality, its divergence and its weakness. Today, we might ask who wants reform in Greece? In response, we'd note that the domestic constituency for reforms defined by an economic liberalism is relatively small. And we'd say that such, reform, such a reform agenda is relatively alien to the Greek tradition. We might also add that, Cleon, that clientelism and Rusfeti politics mitigate the scope for reform by increasing the uh, political cost. In each respect, we can de detect similar domestic conditions in Greece in the 19th century. The early development of the modern Greek state resonates with the constraints on reform in Athens today. Greece has lacked the capacity to fully catch up. And rather like at Navarino, in recent times, the European Union has primarily wanted to isolate the Greek problem. Yes, reform in Greece shut up during the years of the bailouts, but the bailout conditions were often misconceived, making the recession greater and missing the opportunity for wider, meaningful reform. It's still not clear that the EU can manage a heterogeneous economy in which Greece is a key outlier. Yet Europe is crucial to the politics of reform in Greece. Is the new European Recovery and Resilience Fund a game changer? Is Greece more committed to catch up now after its recent trauma? On both counts, I suggest the answer is no more than a tentative, perhaps. The answer is a tentative because just as 200 years ago, Greece's future is tied to a great power, but we don't know if the great power will intervene domestically to help and whether Greece has any greater capacity to catch up. Thank you.